Okay, I um, I think we're live. So let me see here. This is right. recording too. I think we're ready to go, huh? Yeah. Oh, I got the notification on my phone. So, um, and I will, oh, let me turn off the sound on. Okay, great. So uh, this is, Nathan, this is your, this is your deal really. But hello from Newton Public Library. Um, it's May the 4th, so Nathan um, invited some of his Star Wars cosplay friends. And we've got um, also uh, Felix, a young Star Wars fan, on the Zoom room with us. <laughs> and I think some other people are uh, going to tune in on Facebook. So just if you have a, anybody watching on Facebook, if you have questions you can or comments, you can type them in the chat, and I will read them and add them to the discussion here. And um, with that, Nathan, do you want to take it away? All right. Well, happy May the 4th. May the 4th be with you and, and all the uh, the variations there within. Um, we have with us is the 501st. And these guys are bad guys doing good, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's it just, it's really involved and they get really into it for really good reasons. And, uh, and Adam has been in my contact for the 501st for a number of years now. And he has just a wealth of information. And we're just curious about what all is going on uh, over COVID and back and forth. And what can what do you have for us, Adam? Well, I'll give you a little bit of a rundown on uh, 501st, who we are and what we do here uh, real quick, just for those who may not be familiar. Um, 501st is uh, the world's largest costuming organization. Um, we began back in 1997. We've got over 14,000 members uh, currently. Um, last I knew, there were members on every continent, including Antarctica. I'm not sure if uh, those guys are still down there or not. But um, uh, yeah, our, uh, our kind of main goal is uh, promoting uh, Star Wars through uh, charity events. Um, we, we participate in a lot of different charity events. Uh, we do walks, uh, uh, marathons, that kind of stuff. We visit kids in hospitals. Um, and we all do it in... Uh, screen accurate bad guy Star Wars costumes. So you can't just throw something on from uh, the Halloween store and, and join our, our group. You've got to have a screen accurate costume that's uh, judged very strictly. Um, there are also uh, sister organizations that also uh, participate in events with us frequently. We call events uh, that we participate in, we call them troops. Um, so the 501st is we're kind of the biggest group, but then we also have the Rebel Legion. That's our sister group. They do uh, good guy Star Wars costumes. So things like X-Men pilots and Jedi and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, and then there's also the droid builders that, that build uh, dro various droids. And I apologize if you hear all the racket in the background. My cat is going nuts for some reason. Um, and uh, then there's uh, the uh, Mandalorian mercs who build custom Mandalorians. Uh, and then there's a couple other groups like the uh, Dark Empire that do uh, custom Sith. Um, and a couple others that I'm missing. But again, we, we do it all uh, with, uh, as you said earlier, Nathan, bad guys doing good. Uh, it's all uh, out there getting in the environment, doing good for, for people and causes. All right. So uh, can you give us a little rundown on, on your uniform there today? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'll introduce myself and then I'll ask Ian to do the same. Uh, my name is Adam Hazelwood. I am uh, currently in my uh, Thai Reserve pilot costume. Um, this is one of several costumes I have. I also have a Stormtrooper, uh, an Inferno Squad, an X-Wing pilot. Um, and uh, I chose this costume today because I can put it on myself. I'm at home by myself. Uh, the Stormtrooper and Inferno Squad costumes require uh, a handler to help me uh, get all the snaps in place in the right spots. Um, so I opted to wear this costume today. Um, my call sign in the Legion is uh, TK31778, although that is my Stormtrooper designation. When I'm in this costume, I'm TI31778. Uh, TI designates a TIE pilot. Uh, and Ian, would you go ahead and introduce uh, yourself, please? Sure. Uh, my name is Ian Karras. I've been a part of the Legion since I believe it was 2020. Right now I'm wearing my Imperial Security Bureau version one. There are three different versions of the Imperial Security Bureau. 
Uh, this one on that I've got on is basically it's just got straight pants because a lot of the Imperial officers, if you look at images of them, they'll have the flared out jodhpurs. Um, I wore it today for much the same reason as Adam because it's very, very easy for me to get into. Oftentimes I can just kind of make sure it's clean and then slip it on and then I can just go and I'm set and it doesn't take very long. So it's very convenient. Oh, uh, call sign for the Legion is ID uh, 16608. And like Adam said, that just kind of denotes me when I'm just wearing my ISB. I My only completed one costume is my ISB that I'm wearing, but I am working on a clone trooper Denal. And maybe a little bit later, I could show that off for a minute or two, but that's really about it. Thank you, Ian. Yeah, no problem. All right. Well, so um, we just had a really hard year. You start, Ian, you started in this year during uh, COVID in 2020. Uh, so have, have you had anybody tell you how different things have been? I was surprised that we were able to get on for May the 4th. Usually the library is way there, down there on that list. There's there's all the the different places all over the, you know, the state that are begging for the 501st. And I was surprised that we got on for May the 4th this year. Um, so have things kind of slowed down or since you're all, you've got uniforms that are behind masks, are you good to go for most things? Well, um, the thing that's been with, with COVID, and I may for a minute defer to Adam because he's kind of the local leader, so he'd know a little bit better about some of this, but since you asked me, it has slowed down a lot. Um, in 2019, sorry, I got my dates mixed up. I'm sorry, I'm joined in early uh, 2019, 2020 was my first year anniversary. My, my apologies there, Nathan. Um, it slowed down a lot last year or in 2019, there was a lot. I think we had, uh, what was it? Like nearly 50 events or something, Adam, how many did we have in 2019? It was quite a few. Yeah. So, so in uh, calendar year, 2019, um, our squad participated in 48 events in our region. I was going to say it was around like 50 ish. Um, yeah, it, it was real close when we were getting close to the end of the year. I was, uh, getting a little ambitious and I was wanting to squeeze in four more so I could say we did 52 events, one for each week. Um, didn't quite happen. We, we participated in 48 events. Yeah. Year. Um, 2019, which was the uh, largest uh, amount of events we've done in, in our area. Um, and that that's uh, central and southern Kansas, uh, essentially. Um, in calendar year 2020, we did a grand total of three events. Um, and I believe with, with today, we're, we're doing this uh, event with you guys here today. And then uh, also tonight, I've got a, a small Boy Scout event that I got a couple guys going up to in uh, Salina. And I believe with these two events, I think this is our number three and number four event for this year. So things are starting to pick back up. Uh, as for your question about, about the masks, Nathan, um, uh, we are uh, allowed to troop uh, small events, but if if uh, we're in a costume like Ian and I are wearing, then um, we are requiring uh, face masks to be wore. Um, we do, yeah. you, uh, you know, we, we might take it off briefly for, for a photo op or something, but generally speaking, we're, we're wearing a face mask at this point in time. Um, and then characters that are, are wearing uh, helmets or what we call buckets, um, they wouldn't be required to wear an additional face mask behind that. Um, but as uh, the vaccine's rolling out and uh, things are starting to open back up and life's getting back to more and more normal, um, we are starting to do, uh, starting to get more and more events on the calendar. Um, so, uh, you know, a, a place to keep up with, with that for us, by the way, I, I don't know if you've got a place where you can uh, share links or something, but uh, our, our squad here in the Wichita and, and central Kansas area is a Great Plains squad. And if you go to uh, greatplainssquad.org, uh, you can see uh, all of our public events that are, are listed on the calendar, um, as well as a list of all of our squad members um, that shows our, our names and costumes there. Sam, is that something we can toss on to Facebook Live? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can put that up on, uh, the, I can put a link on the Facebook Live for sure. 
Um, yeah, put it, maybe put it in the, put it in the chat. Yeah. What the link is. I was, sorry, I was looking, I was cross posting our live stream to different pages. There you uh, go. Now, one thing that's changed a lot is uh, uh, for larger events or events like the sporting uh, events, like when you see stuff like uh, the Star Wars, um, Star Wars nights at, at professional sporting games and stuff, uh, the larger events like that uh, require Lucasfilm permission before we participate. Um, and at this time, uh, through most of calendar year 2020 and up through today, um, as of today, Lucasfilm is not approving any of those events. So the events that we are participating in are, are smaller. Um, and, you know, hopefully again, as the vaccine rolls out and things start to open back up, um, hopefully we'll start to get to see some of those larger events coming up soon. Cause it's always fun to get to go to the, the hockey games and the baseball games and stuff like that. But uh, just not doing anything that, that is a large gathering like that at this point in time. Okay, yeah, so it really just yeah, it depends. Go ahead. That's a COVID thing, not a Lucas Disney thing. Uh, Lucasfilm, Lucasfilm is not approving any of the large officially sanctioned events at this point because of COVID. Because so, of COVID. Right. Sorry, what were you going to say, Ian? Sorry, man. I was going to say that uh, Adam really covered all of it pretty well. It's just, it really is mostly right now due to coronavirus. Um, and of course, as he said, that for any of the larger things, a lot of some of the stuff, some of the things Lucasfilm has to sign off. The other thing with our events too, I know, is that uh, sometimes we have to uh, abide by because with events, uh, event organizers, and I know this, I do know this for a fact. Event organizers can request specific costumes or eras, or sometimes Lucasfilm themselves will say, "Hey, we only want people from A New Hope," or "Hey, we only want stormtroopers," or "We only want imperial officers." Uh, Adam, there was an event not long ago, I believe, where it was just people from A New Hope, correct? Uh, am I mistaken with that? Or was that uh, last year or? Uh, no, that was just, that was just uh, well, a couple of months ago, actually. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no problem. You guys you hear, still hear me? Yeah, you're good. I can hear you. I, I had some technical difficulty there. Um, yeah, worries. it's fine. Yeah. Probably poor reception in that hangar bay. You got to kind of get to... a... Make sure every time a shuttle comes in, it probably messes with the Wi-Fi. Imperial Wi-Fi is not that great. Don't let Lord Vader hear that, but it can it can be pretty spotty. Fortunately, I'm Coruscant, I'm on Coruscant, so connection should be good for now. Yeah, for now. So yeah, we actually uh, partnered with a group here in town, and I'm going to throw the link over here, uh, Sam, if you can throw that up as well. It's a Dragon Master Foundation. Um, and what the Dragon Master Foundation does is they're, they're a charity organization that raises money for uh, a brain cancer research. And um, they, did, they did a raffle. I'm not actually sure. I know today is when they were going to draw. I don't know if it's too late to join the raffle or not, but they had a bunch of great prizes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they have some cool stuff. Yeah, I think the raffle actually happens tomorrow. Um, <laughs> So I think that I think you can still click on that link there and, and participate in the raffle if you'd like. Uh, there's a lot of uh, cool prizes, including um, oh oh, there's already winners listed. So I guess you can't ah. the raffle now. Um, first place prize was a, an autographed frame poster. It had uh, autographs from Carrie Fisher, David Prowse, uh, Peter Mayhew, which those ones are big because they're not with us anymore. Yeah, they're not with us anymore. They passed on. Prowse passed on pretty pretty recently. Yeah, just uh, two years ago. Yeah. Uh, so, so there was a, a bunch of different prizes um, in the raffle, and uh, the Dragon Master Foundation had asked us to come out, and we were able to participate in an event um, over at um, Exploration Place. Yeah, the Exploration Place in downtown Wichita. It was um, really fun. And I, enjoy, did, I personally enjoyed it. Yeah, we just we came down in costume, and uh, we we posed for some pictures holding some of the prizes. And then they did some uh, some video footage as well. Um, they did kind of a fun little shot where uh, uh, I think uh, Ian, were you in the, the video at the Lego? Was it you? Yes, it was. Uh, you were in your t your stormtrooper, just your regular stormtrooper. Uh, is it a New Hope stunt or Empire Strikes Back? Your uh, stormtrooper because there's different versions New of stormtroopers. Yeah. I can't remember. Uh, but I was in my stormtrooper costume. Yes, I was in my ISB, and then we had a. Uh, um, 
Dustin, he was uh, Chewbacca. He was in his Chewbacca. So, so I was in my stormtrooper, and he yes. was in his uh, Imperial officer, and we were building Legos. And Chewbacca showed up and wiped them off the table. Yeah, it was pretty uh, fun. I, I was good. Did a fun little video of that. Um, and so it, uh, it was fun to be able to, to get out there and, and do something again. Yes, um, absolutely. The people from the Dragon Master Foundation, too, were very nice. The uh, cameraman and was it the vice president of the organization was there as well? Very, very nice as well. They, just everybody out there was, it was wonderful that day. I just really do specifically remember that. It was great. And that was actually, we did that out at the uh, Exploration Place here in town. And we've done several different events out there at Exploration Place. And it's always fun going out there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So when he had the Chewbacca outfit, did he use the voice box or did he actually, you know, make the noise? That, for unfortunately, that would probably be a good question to ask Dust, uh, Dustin, the guy who has the costume. Unfortunately, he wasn't, he's not with us right now. But I believe he has a, a voice box that will sync up. Unfortunately, I don't know about know much about that, but I believe it's an electronic voice box or a voice changer of some kind. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. Um, so, so as Ian was was talking about earlier, his uh, other costume he's working on, like, and like I said, we have to get approved for our costume. So, uh, Dustin is has been working for a while now on his uh, uh, Chewbacca costume, but it is not yet approved uh, on the Rebel Legion side. Um, I am not as familiar with the Rebel Legion as uh, as other members are and I, i've just got the one costume and once you're once you're kind of in you become kind of an expert on the costume that you're building um and not so much all of them um so i'm not sure what all dustin has left to get approved and i'm not sure if a voice box is required uh for a chewbacca costume but it's pretty impressive dustin's uh I'm oh, yes, it is and dustin is shorter than me um but he puts on that chewbacca costume and it's got uh, stilts that he stands on and and i mean he becomes chewbacca he towers over us in that oh, yeah um so yeah i don't remember if he had a, a voice box yet or not but if he doesn't i'm sure i'm sure that's a plan to to get that added at some point because last year we uh 2020 we had a uh a, a, one of your group in that he was uh what was he, he had the voice box for the uh jawa. little yeah the jawa Oh, yeah, yeah. The voice box for Java. That was that was really cool. Had some pre-recorded phrases in there, and it sounded really great. Yeah, and they usually they'll have like a little mechanism where they've got buttons on on their like in their palm. So they've got three or four buttons they can press, and each one of them does like a different sound. Yeah, it'll do a little Java thing. I remember uh, before I joined the Legion. I remember I think his name is Kevin. Uh, are the are kind of a resident uh, Jawa, or he might have been from Firehawk, but he showed me the little glove, and it was just like that. He had a couple little touch pads; they'd be like right on the palm here, and then he'd touch the one and go wah, 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 or Houdini or whatever. So uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, pretty cool to have to have that because it it brings a little bit of a new depth because it's kind of like one thing to have an imperial like an imperial officer, and uh, of course the the full costumes where you got a bucket and everything it really is impressive. Um, but it's always cool to have some of those extra levels of interactivity. Uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. And, and you can see those costumes where sometimes they're just a little bit off, but it makes a, it looks like a Dollar General version. You just, even a small bit off and it just takes the whole magic away, but yeah, it, it's done it, really well. It's done. It sucks it right out. Yeah. And that's the thing with, with the Legion is it's kind of that one step above, if you will, because it's like if you want to go to Ruby's or this and that, um, I, uh, that you can find that, but it's not going to be Legion and it's not going to be what you, what you would really want. Um, so it really is just you got to kind of get into the Legion and get into those circles if you if you want to get something le Legion quality. We have our own like ways to get a hold of stuff, to get our stuff to where it looks and to be approvable by the Legion. So it really isn't something you can just necessarily go out and get. You 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 have to be in the know, basically. So our costumes are all, are all fan made. Um, yeah. So so there's uh, you know I mean I don't know how to sew, so I had to get a hold of somebody who did that was able to put the the flight suit together for me. Um, and we sourced parts from various different places. 
Um, but yeah, the, the cost units that you buy off the rack are not uh, ever going to be Legion approved. Um, yeah. It, now there there is a group called um, uh, oh I'm blanking on their name right now Galactic Academy, um, and Galactic Academy is for uh, uh, members who are interested in costumes that, that they're not 18 years old. In order to be in any of the legions, the Five Hundred First or the Rebel Legion or the Mandalorian Marks, any of those, you have to be uh, 18 years of age or older. Uh, the oh, that's bad news for Felix. <laughs> well, the Galactic Academy uh, is there for members that, or, or uh, uh, fans that are interested in having a costume, but but aren't uh, of age yet to be in one of the legions. And those, uh, the Galactic Academy costumes, those do not have strict uh, regulations like the the uh, ad adult legions say. You could go and and buy a, a costume off the shelf and, and yeah. add on and be a part of the Galactic uh, Academy. And, and we've got a lot of uh, Legion members that will uh, uh, have children that are interested in, uh, in costuming, but they're not old enough to be in the Legion proper. So, you know, they get a costume and join the Galactic Academy and then they come out and, and participate in troops with us as well, often. Um, most of the time, the smaller events that we do um, you know, we'll, we'll do uh, 501st, uh, Rebel Legion, all the different clubs just kind of come together. 99% of the things we do, uh, we do all as one group. And, and often I don't even think of us as separate clubs. We're all just kind of, we're all kind of intertwined. Um, there, there are occasions where only one group uh, is requested. Most often, you know, 501st, like people request Darth Vader and Stormtroopers specifically. Um, but 99% of the event are, are joint events and uh, we allow children that are in the Galactic Academy with a costume to participate with us as well. Well, my next question is, uh, before we move on to other things in the Star Wars universe, uh, we've got, we've got uh, patrons logged in here. Any of you have any questions you wanna ask uh, over video real quick? Some meaningful looks over there from Felix and Elizabeth. You can Chad, also I'm glad type you in the chat. I, I was surprised that I, that Chad, I, I kind of expect you to be uh, in some sort of a uniform yourself. <laughs> well, my, uh, my fandom and geekdom hasn't gone that far quite yet, <laughs> but uh, it might someday. Right now, what I'm really sort of geeking on is I have found something called uh, Star Wars The Gathering which is a alternate Magic the Gathering card set. So I'm like really chomping at the bit to get that all printed out and start playing. Ah. Yeah. I know. We see you, Felix. Like has a question. He's just having trouble with him. Yeah, he's trying to, he's trying to get it figured out. I saw him with his, with his hand up. I'm like, you know, I think he wants to ask. What's the, I think he wants to say something. Oh, yeah. Good, man. Yes, if you and the there's a little microphone in the lower left corner. If you click on it, it should unmute you so you can talk. There you go. There we go. Um, what planet was Chewbacca born on? Well, well, live on. Well, what was he like from? Where was he from? Yeah. Um, Adam, is it all right if I take this one? I tend to like peruse the Wikipedia a lot. If that's all right. Sure, it's all yours. Uh, Chewbacca, along with all the Wookiees, the Wookiee homeworld is Kashyyyk, or as the uh, special that shall not be named is says, Kasuk. I don't know what was going on with that. It, interesting piece of media. Anyways, uh, Chewbacca is, as far as I know, is from Kashyyyk, and the Wookiees live on Kashyyyk. It's a kind of a big planet. Um, you'll see it in uh, Revenge of the Sith. They show Kashyyyk and it's they got this battle scene that happens there. I can't remember like what what time in the movie it's in, but they got these big trees. And I was playing Republic Commando recently, and they they uh, there was levels set on Kashyyyk, and it's like this jungly planet with these big trees. I believe they're called worship trees, and the Wookies live in the trees in these like cool tree house looking things. It's pretty impressive. Cool. All right. Well, you know, I have a question. I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Um, you know the 
the last two years, I mean, the, the Mandalorian has probably been, I mean, season two came out since a year ago when we did this. Um, so I'm wondering what's the level of interest in the Mandalorian or any Mandalorian costumes in your guys' community? And like, what's the difficulty level to actually make all that armor, all that shiny Ooh, armor? That's a, that's a good question. I think uh, the thing is, is neither Adam or I are working on one. We know people who are. We know people who like have made, not specifically like, there's been an, an uptick. There's been an interest, uh, a, a surge in interest in those. That would be like the Mandalorian Mercs, which is where you do like you, it's this kind of this interesting exception. It's like, it, it's, a, it's a costuming group but it's specifically for like Mandalorian characters. And like, if you want to do a custom Mandalorian character, th they do that. It's interesting. I would encourage people, if you want to do that, to go check that out. I'm sure Adam would as well. Of course, in the Legion, I do know that there are specific Mandalorian costumes that are approvable in that. Like you have Boba Fett and there's a couple different versions of Boba Fett that you could do, you could get approved. There's Jango Fett too from Attack of the Clones. Um, my guess is the named characters from the Mandalorian are, if they're not already a part of the uh, CRL, which is the Costume Reference Library, uh, which is basically a big compendium of all of the like currently recognized and approved costumes of the Legion, so everything uh, from stormtroopers to imperial officers to bounty hunters to clone troopers to, to whatever, that would be the place to look for, at least for the Legion, all of the costumes that you could do and that are recognized. Anything beyond that, I honestly wouldn't know. And unfortunately, I'm just not too familiar with the Mandalorian costume making process. Like I've heard things and I've, I've had a couple of people explain things to me, but my guess is I'm just, again, like Adam said earlier, we tend to be experts in the costumes that we make. So, I can't really answer much. Adam, do you have anything you think you could add? Because um, unfortunately, I'm kind of drawn blanks. So the since uh, the Mandalorian show came out, there has been a huge uh, interest in uh, Mandalorian costumes. Uh, as you had mentioned, the Mandalorian mercs, um, they do custom Mandalorian costumes. And a lot of people kind of gravitate towards that. Um, in, the, in the 501st and the Rebel Legions, um, we do only screen accurate costumes. So... Yeah. There's, there's not any opportunity or room to customize or kind of make it your own. Like, uh, you know, yeah. you, you have a very strict set of guidelines. And with the Mandalorian yeah. Mercs, uh, you can customize. And so they've always been popular because people like to kind of take that, that concept of, of the Mandalorian and, and build their own. And when the Mandalorian show came out, uh, interest in, in that particular costume group skyrocketed. Um, as for named Mandalorian characters, um, you know, the only two that I know that are approvable at this point is Boba Fett and uh, uh, Jango. Mandalorian himself. Oh, Jango. Yeah, yeah. yeah Jango. And, and then, Jango. yeah, probably and Mandalorian would be approvable too. And, uh, and, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and some of those, at least, at least Boba Fett is actually, uh, multi, uh, you can get approved in multiple clubs. Boba Fett can be approved in the 501st Legion and the Mandalorian Mercs. Um, although if you're approved in one, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you're approved in the other. There'll be a different, uh, a different, yeah, there's judge. different processes for that. There'll be a different judge that looks over your costume. So you mm -hmm. might get approved in one group and then submit to the other and, and have to make some adjustments to get, to get dual membership. Um, but yeah, there's definitely been an uptick in, in, uh, interest in Mandalorian costumes since the show came out for sure. Right on. So you're not going to find very many Kool-Aid or Rubik's Cube stormtroopers, you know, but in the 501st, but you're going to find them probably in the Mandalorian group where they can change things around more. Rubik's what? Um, Rubik's Funky Cube. Costumes. I mean, there's people who will, if I may for a moment, Adam, uh, there's people who will do like custom, like specialty stormtroopers where it's like their own thing and it's not screen accurate at all. I kind of get what you're referring to. I've seen like a um, like a tracksuit stormtrooper where it's a regular stormtrooper, but he's got like he's got it all painted to look like red and white Adidas or something. And he's got like a full tracksuit, and he's I think he carried around like a like a boombox, like an '80s boombox on his shoulders. That wouldn't be Legion approvable, 
you, you can certainly go out and do that, but you're not you're not going to get it approved in the Legion, even if it, you have even if you were to get all the like right stormtrooper components and this and that, because it's a custom thing and it's not a screen, it's not a name character or a screen character. That's the thing. And again, the man and the Mando Mercs is for Mandalorians. If you tried to bring your own custom stormtrooper in, I don't think they would accept it because they just they do. Uh, their thing again is your custom Mando. So if you wanted to do your uh, your Mandalorian character, where it's like a dude with Mandalorian armor, but you know it's kind of your own, that would be the place for it. As again, as Adam said, the Legion only does screen characters or or characters that are again it's proof. You got to look at you got really got to go to the Legion site and see what all is listed on the CRL because it'll tell you, hey, it'll again it'll list every single one. Um, my guess is, is for if you wanted to look at all of the bounty hunters, because both Boba and Django are bounty hunters. I think they're a, they would be a part of the bounty hunters guild. Is that is that right, Adam? Am I recalling that correctly? Yeah, I believe that's a detachment. They're a part. Yeah, of. yeah. Um, and as for the custom, a lot like stormtroopers and stuff, uh, people do make them, but the costumes, especially the armored costumes, tend to be pretty pricey. Um, so usually what you'll find is if somebody has a custom stormtrooper like the red Adidas one that Ian was talking about, um, those are usually a situation where a member has uh, a stormtrooper costume that he had built and, and got approved uh, at some point. Um, and then maybe he's replaced it as it's gotten older and it's kind of wore out or whatever. So. Uh, you know, he ends, uh, ends up building a different costume or another stormtrooper and then just having fun with the other one. Yeah, um, the old one. That makes sense. Yeah. So that that happens a, a fair amount. Or, or another thing that's pretty common uh, with stormtroopers in particular is uh, when when you get get a, a shiny new stormtrooper uh, kit, uh, it's very white. But over time, you start to develop cracks, and sometimes it'll start to yellow. Yeah, it depends on the material. Sometimes it'll it'll yellow really bad. It can right. So, so when you've got when you've got older uh, costumes like that that are starting to starting to wear out or or discolor, um, a lot of those end up becoming sandtroopers uh, because then they can just take a, a shiny stormtrooper or, or what's left of a shiny stormtrooper and and weather it up, and then the cracks don't matter. Like at that point, it just looks more authentic because it's all flavor it's all flavor for the costume and the uh the approval process it it gives it that worn because you taught you mentioned sand troopers and uh it yeah it really does when you when you have something like that it and as long as it's still functional and the pieces are intact because if it's too badly damaged then obviously you can't wear it but sometimes when you have that like adam said you can get it to where it's approvable and it just it just helps with the whole this looks worn and not so much that he just came out, you know, just got off the Star Destroyer, you know, uh, all lined up for parade formation. And that's how you end up with a uh, Spider-Man Venom Stormtrooper. Yeah, you you get, kind of get all those things. Because, I mean, at that point, um, there's, because once a costume like that gets worn to a certain point, or it's got enough sort of like iniquities, then yeah, it's not really going to be, it's like a little unsightly to wear. Cause it's like, if you're trying to just do a regular stormtrooper that's supposed to be nice and neat and pretty, but it's kind of starting to yellow or it's got a crack. It's like, eh, it just doesn't, it just doesn't look very, it's not very becoming of the members. So like Adam said, you'll probably, you, people will get another one or get a new stormtrooper to make sure that the, uh, the armor is all good. And then they can, the, the old one kind of becomes like, almost like a blank slate. It comes like a new, a fresh canvas. So if they want to do a, a Venom one or a Spider-Man or whatever, um, I, I don't even know what all the custom stormtroopers there are. There's probably everything from Marvel to more obscure things to um, who knows, like even the old, um, like the death troopers, not the new ones, but actual like zombie looking stormtroopers. Those are out there. But um, I don't know if that, I don't think those are provable. Um, I think, I think actually those are, I think there is a zombie trooper. There is an actual death trooper. That's, that's interesting. I didn't know that. I thought that would be, uh, that was not, that would be not approvable because that was kind of from the uh, old, that was from the old legends. Um, there, 
there, so most of the costumes in the 501st and Rebel Legions are things that we've seen on screen, like in, in the, uh, well, let's see, 11 feature films now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and also then branching out into a lot of the animated properties. But there are, there are some older stuff from, from what's called Legends now. So uh, for anyone who doesn't know when Disney uh, purchased Lucasfilm back in 2012, uh, shortly after that purchase, they took all of the existing novels and comic books and video games and uh, eliminated that as a part of the official canon story. Um, and then they've rebranded that stuff Legends. So they still, uh, they still produce that content um, or, you know, they still publish those books and stuff, but they're under the Legends banner and they're not officially a part of the story. Um, and then everything that Disney has published uh, going forward from that has been a part of the canon um, with a few exceptions like the Lego stuff and uh, that, that uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but there's a Simpsons special that came out today that's just a like, little three or four minute short that's on Disney+. Plus. There's a few things like that that are uh, not canon, um, but the stuff that's legends, uh, stuff like the, the Stormtrooper, the zombie Stormtrooper, um, Mara Jade, uh, some of those characters are still approvable in the Legion. Um, yeah. kind of grandfathered in they were a part of the the uh as a part of the legends they're they're not they're not uh, the costume reference library there aren't new characters being added to the costume reference library that are legend status now but if a character had been uh if a costume had been approved prior to that changeover then those costumes still exist in in the costume reference library yeah, and they're still approvable yeah so I'm stuck thinking about zombie stormtroopers. They wouldn't be able to bite each other with the helmets on. So <laughs> was it actual zombies or was it like some Sith did some necromancy kind of thing? Um, I could see necromancy being involved in the Sith world. Um, from what I can recall, unfortunately, I have not read the novel, but I have heard about it. It was, uh, what was it? Black, black? It was, from what I can tell, at least in the Legends continuity, there was some sort of imperial project going on on, I think it was like, you know, re reviving people or looking into some kind of like necromantic capabilities. And then it basically turned into a, basically a zombie story, but Star Wars. Standard. Yeah. Um, I, I read the book um, way back when it came out. It was yeah. called Death Troopers. And it was, I mean, they were, yeah, they weren't your traditional bite you and you turn into a zombie if i remember correctly but they were well i think it was more like a almost like a resident evil plot line where it kind was of something like that yeah some sort of genetic you know experimentation yeah. gone awry or something um, i don't know it was yeah. a book I, I enjoyed it but um but uh it is it is legends now so yeah. as far as content goes with the disney and everything else it's kind of all happened around the 2020 range and disney plus I only got Disney Plus at home because my daughter really wanted to watch the Mulan movie. So we signed up for all that. And then I really got hooked on Mandalorian and all that. Um, what do you think about the, the whole Disney coming in with the, with the Disney Plus? Has that been a real boon? Uh, Disney, Disney Plus, there's obviously a ton of content that's come out. I mean, we've got two seasons of The Mandalorian. We got a, an extra season of The Clone Wars just today. Um, Bad Batch started. Yes, I watched that this morning. First thing but I got up, I watched no that. No spoilers. No spoilers. I wasn't going to say anything other than I thought it was a pretty a pretty good start. Maybe not the greatest start, but I thought it was pretty good. I'm going to have to keep my eyes on that series. Um, and then outside of that, there was an additional 10 projects uh, between series, uh, live action series, animated series, and, and I think a movie or two thrown in there that was announced. Um, and Almost all of that, if not all of it, is coming to Disney Plus. It seems like Disney's kind of switching over to a little bit more of a focus on on their streaming service. Um, I personally, I'm a fan of it. Um, you know, some of the content's better than others, but um, I'm excited excited to see what's coming. It's nice to see that, like, it looks like they're throwing some money at it. Oh yeah, the I mean, and the technology is is really impressive. I don't know if any of you guys have watched the. The making of stuff for the Mandalorian, but I've seen have, a little bit of that. They, they have a, uh, a, a an environment that they call uh, the volume, um, and it's essentially a large set 
but it is uh, surrounded by um, LED screens um, all around it and on the ceiling. So think like a like a, a green screen situation where you'd have a green screen and then the environment is uh, added in post production via visual effects. Um, using the volume, they actually project the the backgrounds uh, onto the LED or they're they're displayed on the LED screens uh, above the actors and and around them. Um, and then the, so the actors on the set actually see the, uh, they see the environment. They're not just seeing a green screen, like they actually see the environment. Um, and so if there's a mountain off in the distance and you've got, uh, Mando is there with his, you know, shiny helmet and you see a reflection on the mountain, like that's actually a reflection of the mountain that's being displayed on the screen that the actor can see in person. So they don't have to go in and add that, um, uh, after the fact. And uh, you know, there's a lot of actors that are very big fans of that because it, it helps them instead of just seeing a green screen and having to imagine what they're seeing, like it's right there. Um, and, and that's very impressive technology and allows them to do a larger, uh, larger kind of more movie-like uh, production value on a much smaller budget. Um, and we're starting to see uh, other movies and TV shows take advantage of that. I believe it's, uh, Thor Love and Thunder, which is the new Thor movie coming out. It's being directed by uh, Taika Waititi, who uh, directed several episodes of The Mandalorian, and he is the voice of IG-11 in The Mandalorian. Um, he's directing the new Thor movie. He directed the last one as well, but uh, he was uh, sending out some pictures from the set recently, and they're using the volume on, on that film as well, so it's starting to branch out to other stuff, which is super cool. Nice. So it's actually like giant TVs or is like projection TVs? So they're, they're, they're it's, it's a, some sort of LCD or LED display. It's not a projector. Um, okay. Like it's like a, like a giant TV screen that wraps the whole stage and then is above the, above their heads as well. And then they'll do stuff like they might maybe in a lot of the scenes, you'll see uh, uh, the razor crest, the razor crest of the Mandalorian ship. Um, You'll you'll see it, and when the when the actors are right next to it, uh, there's a physical component of that. Like they'll build like the bottom half of the ship, but then the top half of it, and maybe the nacelles up top, are just projected onto the the uh, LED screen. So they don't have to build as much of the set, and they're able to kind of integrate like kind of so it's half half realistic set and props, and then the rest of it is is just displayed on a screen. It's really cool. And on Disney Plus, they've got, uh, for season one, there was eight episodes of like behind the scenes stuff. And then for season two, there was just one episode that was like, I think a couple hours long. But if you're interested in that kind of stuff, it's well worth it. I personally, I kind of look forward to that kind of stuff almost as much as I do the actual episodes and movies. Like I love, I love uh, seeing how the sausage is made as it were. Mm -hmm. I love all the behind the scenes stuff. I bought the Lord of the Rings with all the extended stuff. So it was like 13 hours worth of Lord of the Rings movies. And that was great. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I think what's coming next is uh, for kids of the 80s like me, Boba Fett was like the figure everybody wanted. And what's coming next is going to be the book of Boba Fett. And I think... Um, I think we're going to see a, a lot of excitement for that series. I think it, I personally think that's going to be bigger than the Mandalorian just because of my generation. Right. Um, I might be the oldest dude on this call. So, but um, that's, I think for Disney plus, that's what has been so exciting for me or what I've enjoyed the most is just this, some of the new stuff that's coming out because I hope Disney learned we don't need a new movie every other year, but we do need something about every every other year. Yeah, the book of Boba Fett uh, is supposed to come out, I believe, this December. So I'm anxiously, anxiously awaiting. For any of you guys who have seen uh, Mandalorian season two, and we should probably uh, not talk about it too much here to avoid spoilers, but it was pretty epic and I am ready to see what comes next. They got the right actors for it too. That's for sure. Yes. Do you guys think we're going to see any more of Baby Yoda? 
I uh, mean, considering how much merchandise they've got of uh, Baby Yoda, probably, I think they would be, it's, Baby Yoda's probably gonna, gonna be around for a while. I, I don't like have any, oh yeah, maybe Yoda will be around for precisely two years and then they'll be done with the character. I, I don't have any predictions like that, but I, I think maybe Yoda will still kind of stick around. If not in the main series stuff, then there'll probably be plenty of references or appearances or cameos by Baby Yoda in spinoff material or merchandise. Like they're not gonna, Disney's not gonna just let, let that go because uh, my man, the the interest in the the demand for Baby Yoda merchandise was so ravenous that uh, it was insane how just how popular just just Baby Yoda was in addition to the in addition to the Mandalorian. Uh, I imagine I imagine they'll find a way to get him back in there one way or another. Uh, I, he's he's huge, obviously. So oh yes. So I'm sure we'll see him again at some point. The social media demand and the demand for his merchandise that that went on for a year and a half when we didn't even know his name. I mean, there's no way. There's no way they can let that go. Yeah, they really they really struck gold. And it's in a way, it's almost like one of the easiest things to do. You just take something, make it small, and then make it cute. It's like you take it, you give you make it small and you give it big eyes. That's like one of the most like appealing like aesthetics to the human brain is just something small with large eyes i think felix had a question okay go ahead um my cousin thought baby yoda didn't have legs <laughs> well I, I can see why he would uh why they would think that but you don't get to see him very often so i guess yeah you don't really you're kind of all buried up in the i don't know if it's like a little uh, tunic uh onesie I don't, i'm not quite sure what that would be robes Little baby Yoda robes. It's a puppet. <laughs> well, well, baby yeah, Yoda's a yeah. puppet. He is. It is a, it's he's a puppet on the. That's interesting. I guess they did use puppetry, and not just CGI for Baby Yoda. Yeah, they did use puppetry for Baby Yoda. Uh, I mean, the original the original Yoda from uh, Empire and uh, Return of the Jedi was a puppet uh, done by Frank Oz, legendary Frank Oz. And they also, I want to say, brought back Puppet Yoda for episode uh, nine. They they did some puppetry and then they just kind of, you know, made it look all force ghosty in edit uh, or in post or whatever to kind of give it the whole, you know, uh, that. There has been um, a lot of focus since uh, Disney uh, bought Lucasfilm with all their projects. There's been a lot of focus on more practical effects. Um, there are a lot of fans that were unhappy with the prequels because of the uh, amount of CGI uh, in those films and, and didn't feel like they really lived up. Um, so there's been a lot of focus on the practical effects in these new projects. And I find it really interesting myself. I can certainly understand the viewpoints. There are some CGI elements of the prequel trilogy that don't hold up real well today, quite frankly. Um, yeah. But, but at the same time, um, they, uh, I believe still to this day, Revenge of the Sith, uh, episode three, which was a prequel film, um, I believe still holds a record for the most uh, practical effects and sets built. There were, uh, there were a lot. They were, they were just enhanced with CG. And, uh, yeah. you know, George Lucas back in the 70s when he made the original Star Wars was really pushing the envelope when it came to... Uh, technology as far as movies are concerned and i mean the 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 modern landscape of, of visual effects would most likely not be anywhere near where it is today without george lucas and his push um and i feel like when uh when well famously when uh jurassic park came out is when george lucas said okay technology has finally caught up to my vision and I can start working on new Star Wars movies now because we can we can move forward we have the technology um, and so when the prequel movies came out um, in the late 90s and, and early 2000s uh, that was really kind of early CGI and George was at the forefront pushing it just like he was at the forefront pushing digital effects uh, back in the late 70s um, and uh, you know that's one thing that 
personally, I've been a little bit disappointed uh, with the new content is as much as I enjoy it, I feel like there's not a lot of technological boundaries being pushed up until we got the volume, um, which is which is incredible, but there wasn't any real standout uh, technologies or, or effects in, in the uh, sequel trilogy, um, like we saw with the original trilogy and, and the uh, prequel. Yeah. That, it seemed then. to me, this is just like my observations, because I went to, I think I saw all three of the sequel trilogy in theaters, and I, I was also uh, did stuff for the premiere in, uh, I think that was in 2019 was the premiere of Rise of Skywalker. Um, it seemed to me that those films felt more like they were just using computers for everything than even the prequels. I mean, I do certainly think that your comment about how some of it just doesn't hold up due to it still being sort of, you know, early HD computer generated imagery. That is true. But with the new films, it's like it's all polished, but it's all very, it's like there's sort of this air of, well, everything is polished nowadays, at least for higher budget movies. And it didn't quite have as much of a, like it didn't quite stick with me as much. There's been a bit of a mixed reception to that. Some of it's been very emotional. Some of it's been more level-headed, but it's, at least, and this is just kind of me going, going personal and then I'll, I'll uh, I need to uh, see, I need to see so we can keep moving, but it felt more so that the sequel trilogy was kind of just using computers to fill in the holes more than uh, it's, it seemed like with everything else, like it was just a little more apparent. I don't know. Maybe that's, that's just, this is my take. That's just my personal take. Yeah. When they're wow, trying wow. to make digital versions of a claymation creature, it's kind of, it is interesting when they do that. Um, when it comes to uh, the library over 2020, I didn't see a lot of new star Wars books you feel like maybe those are not getting approved as fast anymore now that uh, Disney is kind of making all these new products out for the well, market? Well, um, so it's, it's kind of funny that you say that. Yeah, I, throughout the course of, of calendar year 2020, there was a lot, there were, there were a lot fewer uh, novels and comics that hit, um, largely due to uh, things just being slowed down from COVID. Um, but this year there have been, I believe we're on our third, uh, no, fourth um, novel. Well, there were three adult novels that have released this calendar year so far. Um, and then there are at least one young adult novel that, that I've, uh, well, I'm on the third out of those four I just mentioned. I'm about halfway through the third one right now. Um, so I'm a little bit behind, but they, they do seem to have picked up the publishing pace this year. Um, versus last and that's made it a little rough because I, I mean we're five months in and we've got three full adult novels and uh, normally I think they would have been spread out a little bit more but since some of them were delayed due to COVID we're getting them uh, crammed in a little quicker so uh, you know if you're a fast reader and, and like new content constantly coming out I guess that's a good news for you but um, I like to take my time so I'm feeling a little rushed. <laughs> So Adam, do you have like this bookshelf somewhere? There's just Star Wars all in sequence, and uh, no, no, I am a uh, I'm a digital reader, so I buy all of my books um, on Kindle and read most of them on my phone. Um, I also am an Audible subscriber, so I listen to a lot of my books through audio. I in my job, I I do a lot of driving. Um, so with an audio book, I can listen to it while I'm in the shower or while I'm doing work around the house or while I'm uh, out for a walk or driving and, and kind of multitask a little bit. So I actually consume a fair amount of my audio or a fair amount of my books through audio book uh, content. Do they find the, do they Frank, find Frank Oz and whatnot for the voices on some of these or they just have voice actors to sound really good? No. Um, Usually what they do is 99% uh, of the time, it's just a, a single uh, a single individual who reads the book and they'll do, they'll do voices um, for the different characters, but they're not, 
not anything like like Dee Bradley Baker does for Clone Wars, right? Where he does you know all the clones and all, all sorts of different voices. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're not they're not voice actors. They're just you know they just read the audio book and, and they'll do a voice here or there. Mm -hmm. um, there have been a couple of of examples. The only one that's coming to mind right now is there was a, a Dooku book uh, or book. It was actually originally not even released as a book when it initially came out. It was only an audio production. Um, I believe it was called Dooku Jedi Lost. Um, and, and it was it was really interesting, and it was it was about Dooku leaving the Jedi Order. So you kind of got mm. the backstory of Dooku and and what happened when he left the Order, and, uh, and Asajj Ventress was a key player in that. Um, and that was a full on audio presentation with music and sound effects and and uh, a full cast. Um, but most of the time, it's just a single uh, reader reading a book, and and they'll throw in some background music. It's nothing original. Um, you know, they'll take a, you know, a, you know, a piece of music from one of the films and throw it in the background sometimes, but, but, uh, most of them aren't full, full productions. That's good. Cause we're coming up, uh, October this star Wars reads day. And so we'll try mm -hmm. and get you guys scheduled again for something. That, about that'd be, that'd be fun. Uh, yeah. I'll have to see if I can make that. Uh, yeah, hopefully, yeah. hopefully by then we'll, uh, We'll be more past this COVID thing, and we'll be able to do a lot. Yeah, some of the restrictions will lighten up further. Yeah, and we won't have to be uh, hands tied with the, the Zoom, Zoom. Yeah, that's the big thing. Is it's just simply the number of people. Usually, uh, is you can only have like from what I know, it's usually you can only have so many people at certain types of events or and in buildings or you know. Uh, so it kind of it really does limit the scale of events we can go to because some of the, like you, like Adam said earlier, some of the events that we go to be at the sports events or Comic-Con, it's a lot of people and you can't for the like past, you know, year or so you can't really have crowds that big anymore. It's just, it's not safe. Everybody has to stand at lightsaber distance. Yeah. Yeah. Six <laughs> feet and all that. And so it's, uh, yeah. it's been kind of tough for getting those really big events because it's kind of at those bigger events where you, not, not to say that you can't make connections at smaller things. You absolutely can. You, you never know. But it's usually when we really have, as Legion members, we have the opportunity to really interact with the public or other people who might be interested uh, or more like, you know, are going specifically because they want to see the other cosplayers and whatnot. It is those larger events where we tend to kind of, we'll, we'll, we might get one or two people be like, oh, hey, I'm kind of interested in that. And I want to know. And like, hey, do you have a card? Because that's happened. I've had, I've been to things, I think it was last year at uh, ICT. There were like one or two people who were like, hey, I'm kind of interested in this. Or, hey, I've got this X costume and it's not like Legion approvable, but I'd like to do something like that. How do I get a hold of you guys? How can I talk with you on a more permanent basis? Yeah, I can see the, the Make ICT maker group having like vacuum seals and trying to make their own whatnot. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And have you been to the new building? Uh, there's uh, the new convention center in uh, Wichita. Oh, sorry. I no, I was thinking you were talking about Make ICT, the makers group. You are just talking about ICT. Oh, no, I was talking about the convention. It's called, oh, I, it was right. called ICT Comic Con. Uh, so no, I was not uh, familiar with the panel or uh, the group you were talking about unfortunately yeah uh, i was more to talk about the conventions i've not been involved with any of those guys but i can definitely see what you're saying nathan it seems like there's probably some uh, cool stuff going on over there but i've not i've not got involved personally with any of that stuff yeah me neither all right well we've got about five minutes left and we've got your link for the group adam um you guys want to mention anything else to us any big events coming up or whatnot not not in terms of events, Adam. Is there any really anything on the radar? Uh, so, as I said, that if you go to greatplanesquad.org, um, that lists our, our upcoming events. Currently, the only thing showing up on that calendar is this event right now that we're doing, uh, and the Salina one too, as well as the uh, Salina Boy Scout yeah. one happening tonight. Um, only public events go on there. So, you know, one, once we're able to go visit the, the Children's Hospital again, for example, those don't show up there because those aren't things that the public can come to. Um, but if you if you keep your eyes on that, uh, as events are uh, approved and, and posted that are public events that you can see us at, they'll, they'll go on that website there. Um, there are a handful of conventions coming up. Some of them have, have been uh, 
canceled, like Smallville Comic Con, for example, is the one that yeah. happened in Hutchinson, and they canceled it last year, and they've canceled it again this year. Um, but there are some others, I believe, ICT Comic Con uh, and Air Capital Comic Con are both still uh, planned for later on this this uh, uh, this year in the late summer or fall. Um, and then like Planet Comic Con up in Kansas City. Uh, those are our bigger events that tend to get kind of on, on the calendar and on the radar a little quicker just because there's a lot of uh, organization that goes into that. Um, the smaller events are, you know, usually, usually for anybody interested in, in having us out for a charity event or something, by the way, I, I usually try to, I like to have a lead time of at least a month usually so that that way I can get the event planned and get it on the calendar and, and request uh, my members uh, join, like I said, it is all volunteer. Um, but keep your eyes peeled on that website and uh, any uh, public event that we're at will be listed there and you can come and see us there. And I think Felix has another question. Oh, we can't hear you, Felix. Yeah, here, you got to get your mic, buddy. There you go. Why is Job of the Hut such so like a blob? Why? Just why? Why did they make the speech species like that? Uh, that's, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, I, I'll, I think I'll take this one because I'm a little bit more into like the lower. For what I know is huts are just kind of that way as a species. They're big. They're very, actually, they're supposedly, they're very muscular. So they're actually very strong. Like you see like Java sit and goes, whoa, 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 whoa. you know, like the world's most evil Santa Claus. But uh, they, apparently it's because they're kind of like basically big giant slugs of like fat and muscle. Um, in terms of like the creative decision, I'm not so sure about that. Adam would probably know more as to why like Lucas went with that design. The original Jabba was also a, a huge multi-person puppet. Adam, I think you'd know more about that. So if you want to talk about that for a minute, that'd probably be neat. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't really have any insight into that. I can just say, um, if I understood uh, how these things crawled out of George Lucas's imagination, I'd probably make a lot more money than I do. Um, so there's a ton of uh, behind the scenes making of stuff you can watch that might give you a little bit of insight into that. But yeah, I, I, can't, I can't tell you where Java came from. All right. Well, Sam, do you have anything else for, that we have coming up you want to talk about real quick? Um, not that it has a lot of overlap. In, in two days, we have an event about uh, sustainable farming with, with uh, Wes Jackson, who is great. Uh, he's a big name in the sustainable farming world. So check on our Facebook page for details about that. Um, and I, I did want to put in a plug, though. We did open for um, browsing. You can walk the shelves, pull books down, look at them just like the good old days. So um, all of our Star Wars books are conveniently shelved together under the call sign Star Wars. So just uh, head over to the Star Wars shelf and, and take a look. And I, I know that we've got at least, uh, at least two or three of those five new novels. I think that we try to get all of them, the Star Wars novels that come out. So I did see one with a Wookiee Jedi on the cover that looks like fun. Um, so yeah, check those out. And also audiobooks, we've got, we've got those on the Libby app. So if you're not an Audible subscriber, or even if you are, you can probably get some audio, listen to some audiobooks for free with your library card. So um, all kinds of great, uh, the comic books as well are on Hoopla. Um, so lots of great uh, Star Wars stuff to discover at the library and elsewhere. So thanks everybody again for, for participating. This was a lot of fun. Yes, yes. thank you. Thanks for having thank you. Yes, thank you for uh, having us. All right. Well, um, may the fourth be be with you. Yes, may the fourth be with you. Yes. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks again for having us.